I'm National Park Service Ranger Andy Schnetzer, and I'm here in front of Spinwinder on the campus of the University of Massachusetts at Dartmouth. Join us this November as we engage about the industrial history of New Bedford, and we use this amazing sculpture here at the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth to put into context this magnificent and often undertold story. I'm Rebecca Uchel. I am a member of the faculty in art education, art history, and media studies at the College in Visual and Performing Arts here at UMass Dartmouth, where I'm standing on a hot summer day uh, at the front of campus with our acclaimed public sculpture uh, by the sculptor Nancy Holt. The title of the sculpture is Spinwinder. Holt is well known for her uh, deeply site-specific and place-specific art projects. Holt also had extensive family history in this region. Her grandfather, Samuel Holt, was the head of the weaving and designing department of the New Bedford Textile School, which is a predecessor school to our school, UMass Dartmouth. In creating this artwork, Nancy Holt proposed a formal structure that would relate to machineries and mechanisms of the textile industry. The spools uh, are intended to be rotated. The central element is also intended to be rotated. Spin winder, she said, is intended to evoke the moving of bobbins and spools and threads. Here along the south coast of Massachusetts in the early 1800s, the textile industry was really taking off. A lot of the whaling merchants of New Bedford were looking for alternate ways of investing their capital from the whaling industry. Looking at the mills along the Blackstone River Valley and in Fall River and all across uh, Massachusetts, they started to think that maybe investing in cotton manufacturing right here in New Bedford would have been a productive and profitable venture. Right there in historic downtown New Bedford on the banks of the Acushnet River is Wamsutta Mills. Built right around the peak of the whaling industry, it had 10,000 spindles and one of the most powerful steam engines in the world. The Acushnet River is geographically a perfect place for spinning textiles. It has a deep water port, so ships can come and go as much as they'd like. Also, the temperature and humidity are just right for the cotton fibers to spin perfectly and make very tight and strong bonds. Wamsutta Mills became known for making some of the highest quality cotton anywhere in the world. It makes me think of how cotton spinning works, where you have several spools of bobbins of what's called roving, which is a gently spun cotton thread. But when that's pulled and twisted even tighter, those threads are locked into place, becoming finished thread. And it makes me wonder just, just how, how the motion and, and the, uh, the energy is transferred, not just from being able to touch and actually see how it, how it turns, but to be able to step back and look at it from a distance and see a larger system at play. Nancy Holt always intended that there would be artifacts from the regional textile industry embedded within this central element. When you talked about how her own ancestry was so deeply connected to New Bedford and the industrial history of New Bedford, and then eventually to this university, it made me think that, that this is perhaps one of the more personal pieces, something that really represented her potentially as, as a person and her own DNA and her own sense of place. A plaque explaining these features will be placed near the sculpture. Now in 1991, when the sculpture was produced, that plaque was not produced, but it was always conceived as part of the artwork. And now on the 30th anniversary of the sculpture, we have finally completed the plaque. And this is another act of preservation, interpretation, and artistic fruition that this exhibition allows us to pursue on behalf of Nancy Holt and Spinwinder.